It's final words. Final words. Non-final words. Final and Mod Po do not jive. But we'll pretend they're final because this is a chance for us to reflect and semi-conclude and think about what it's meant to be part of this global community. And we're really excited about it. So we have no agenda other than final words. What we want you to do, please, if you're out there, is Skype at Mod Po Pen or call 610-616-3208. And keep in mind that since we can't go directly to the phone because we're going to be doing our own final words and we're going to be reading some final words from the discussion forum thread, um, that means that we ask you to call back or hold on. Keep trying. The phone will work. It does work. But when you call, and what do you get, Chris? A busy signal or? It just rings and then eventually it stops. It rings and eventually stops. <laughs> so keep calling, 610-616-3208. We can't get huge numbers of calls in, but we would love to hear from people far and wide. We also want to hear, of course, from our beloved TAs, and also Chris and Zach, who never get to talk. And uh, hi, Jake. There's Jake. Um, and of course, Lainey as well. Um, so a couple of announcements. First of all, our CTAs, community TAs, there are, how many of them are there, Lainey? say above 70. It's a lot of people who are all volunteering their time to basically, they cover all the time zones that are possible, maybe with the exception of one. Um, they're awake, they're on it, they respond, they do an amazing job responding to everybody's essays. We haven't really sh been able to shout out to them enough, so this is the moment where we want to say thank you, community TAs, we love you. Some of them have been with us for 11 years, um, and each year we add new CTAs and a few people get very busy and they sort of hang back and then they come back. Uh, I just want to point out three in particular, though, though you know, really it would be great to just name all 70 of them so they can hear themselves named because they do incredible work for this course. It wouldn't, it's the secret to the success of a massive open online course that there are people out there who are basically like precinct captains. You know, they're out there making sure that everything is safe and everything is good. And one, I would say the main reason why Modpo has no trolls, this season, not a single troll, okay? Go talk to anybody who's involved with tens of thousands of people in an online community that's open and free, no barrier to entry, and see how many trolls are there. No trolls, basically no untoward comments, um, no insults that weren't later retracted, you know, just, it's amazing, and I think it's because of the CTAs. I think they are the eyes and ears. Um, Anthony Watkins, uh, in particular, is just holds up the whole structure of it. He's the one who sets up the CTA only, staff only forum threads where we discuss what's needed in the site. He also does the, um, what is it called, uh, hopelessly lost thread every week. And you know what, another thing that's a sign of the success of Modpo? Tell us. Nobody seems, <laughs> are you my straight man or something? <laughs> what, Al? <laughs> I wasn't you need to clean those people. glasses. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, with it, that was an off, off bef anyway, uh, <laughs> off-site conversation. Um, hopelessly lost? Hardly anybody's hopelessly lost. I mean, it used to be that that thing was full of people saying, oh, I don't know how to do this, how do I find that? And they're just not there. Thank you, Anthony Watkins, you're amazing. Sanjeev Naik, who is not so active inside the forums, but maintains the 10,500 person Facebook group. Talk about things that could go off the rail. A 10,000 person Facebook group. Sanjeev is just so amazing. He lets people in, he kicks people out when they're not there be, you know, f to talk about poetry and you can imagine what that is. And Sanjeev just, he and I sort of keep an eye on it but he's 24 seven. And finally, of course, Irene Tora Modano who was here for five weeks. I know who is watching live because it's only 6 p.m. in Madrid. Hey, Irene, we love you, we miss you. Uh, thanks for being such an amazing uh, part of this community. A um, couple more announcements. Erica Kaufman is setting up a special post-final words office hour. What? Erica, what time and when? Is it tomorrow? 
It's tomorrow at 7 p.m. and it's a chance for us to <clears throat> have have just like a little bonus round of final thoughts or final words. What a really nice idea, Erica. You're the best. Thank you. Thanks, Al. And you're the best. No, you are the best. So what I what I think we should do is would you remind me by email i'll put that in an all course announcement along with the recording of this session okay um laney is feverishly at work on the slopo mini courses um for those of you who don't know they're typically what is it a week or 10 days 10 days 10 days i'm going to do one that's 20 days i think something like that on um joan retallick which is really exciting um and they're going to be a bunch of others and we'll announce those uh very soon so we hope you'll join those um, we will be in Los Angeles, California, USA, the left coast, uh, the best coast, frankly. I mean, New York's the greatest city in the world, but California's on the best coast. May I just say that? Have I ruined my whole identification with the East Coast? Nobody's looking at me like, we don't know what you're talking about. Um, we're going to be having various get-togethers, and we would love Modpo people to be there February 9th. There's another one on the 10th. There's another one on the 11th. It's going to be great. And where will we travel next October? We don't know yet. Lainey, where would you like to go? Come on, tell us. Um, how about Scotland? Yeah. Edinburgh and Glasgow. Correct. And, yeah, since Sophia is going to come along, what would you, do you have a vote on that? Uh, no, I just second Lainey. Okay, that's a long way to go, guys. Fine. Chris, Zach, can we do, can we do go overseas? No prob? We've done it before, we'll do it again. Yeah, okay. It's fantastic. Okay, so what we're going to do is final words, and we're going to start. I'm sorry, uh, we're starting with Jake. I didn't give you any warning, Jake. I really apologize. <laughs> we'll do Jake followed by um, Erica. Final thoughts, final words, and take a little extra time because this whole thing is devoted to the final words, and we hope people will call 610-616-3208. I wanted to point out that the final words thread that I put up had a huge response and so in between the final words of our beloved TAs and people who call in um, I'm going to read a selection of some of those posts they're really amazing okay Jake hey buddy hey um, excited for the LA visit and and uh, the sessions here in LA that I hope I'll um, I'll come to all Did of them you mark your calendar yet I I'm, I'm sure it's marked, or maybe it marked itself. I think no, no. Um, I think it is marked because you're coming with Laney and me to do some new Modpo videos with some amazing poets out there. So you're you're in. Okay, great. Um, okay, so I want to say words of gratitude for this community, as always. Um, specifically, I'm also grateful for the TA chat that's been going on here um, on the backdrop. It's been um, nourishing and entertaining and delightful. I'm also especially grateful for the ever growing Modpo Plus section. Um, I think most of the time in my office hours gravitated towards those things in Modpo Plus, many of which um, I haven't seen before or haven't discussed before, or haven't dived in and it's been such a pleasure. Um, and Zoom, um, in as much as it's as as we're all fed up with it, having Zoom sessions uh, for office hours is like a completely different world. And the times that I was able to do it, I enjoyed it complete uh, very very much. Um, I want to just um, end with a with a little um, excerpt from a poem by Anne Lauterbach, um, discussing her two poems that I haven't haven't really dived into before. It was it was major highlight for me and and this is a piece um, from one of the poems having spent some moments thinking of the vision that accommodates all that is unforeseen as the world now becomes without sequence so the vision that accommodates all that is unforeseen um, what a great way to um, kind of uh, articulate what a poem is. It's a vision that accommodates mm -hmm. the thing that you can't even imagine will happen or will be part of it. And yet um, the language accommodates in advance. It's kind of magical. Um, and part it's of the, the most accommodating the thing, that language. It's the most, everything else is so stiff and regular and status quo seeking. 
Jake, that's beautiful. Thank you. Jake Marmer, everybody. This is Jake Marmer. We love you. Snaps for Jake Marmer. Thank you, Jake. All right. Before we turn to Erica, we have someone on the phone. Chris, is this person ready to talk? I think so. You're not sure? No, I think... You're talking to somebody. I think they are ready to talk. Okay. Um, Am I ready to stop talking to them is the question. Okay. Uh, Oh, you like that part, don't you? I do. I do. I do very much. Uh, On the line we have, calling from England, our friend Sharon Wells. Sharon. Hi, Sharon. Can you hear me? (laughs) Hi. Hey, are you on your boat? Yes, Yes. Are you on the boat? No, not on the boat at the moment. It's not today, no. It's wet and miserable and uh, not actually afloat. (laughs) I saw on Facebook some people over there and it's very miserable. Oh, well. But as soon as the sky's clear, get out on the boat. You know, John is still a boat guy, yeah? Don't don't worry, we will. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah, we'll be out there as soon as it's... uh, I mean, we still still go out when it's wet, but... uh, Mm. We don't set out when it's wet. If we get caught out, then that's one thing. But uh, we don't choose to go out when it's wet. We don't have to now. Not when we're working. When we were working, we had to do it, but not now. <laughs> hey, Sharon, it's probably the only good thing about England's industrial period uh, because it made such a mess of things. But other yeah. than that, all those canals got built, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yes, it's, it's fantastic going around, particularly the... Birmingham Canal Networks, the central <laughs> bit. You, you can see all the industrial heritage uh, around there. It's sad as well because it's all gone. Right, right. <laughs> but, amazing. Uh, yeah, amazing. It, is, it, is, it is amazing to see, to see the infrastructure that was there. Hey, Sharon, before you do your final word, um, <laughs> can I – we were talking a few minutes ago about maybe our trip next year in October would be to <laughs> Scotland. Would you guys come up for that? Pause. Would certainly try, yes. Okay. Yeah. Can't bring the boat up there. I think that would be close enough. I would give it a good go. <laughs> yes. Anyway, here's Only a, a hop chance. Only a skip and a jump. We yes. wouldn't get there by boat. We wouldn't quite make it by no, boat. No, you we wouldn't make it. Too many mountains, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, here's your chance for, a fu- for final words. It's good to hear from you. It's all yours. It's, it's just a final word to say, I love my as ever, and the 10 weeks have flown by, and... Um, even if I'm not, act- I, have, I have tried to interact. I'm reading everything that people people are writing all the time, and it's just a fantastic, fantastic, yeah, just wonderful. Th- thank you, Sharon. Love <laughs> I to keep, John. Uh, I, I keep trying to introduce new people to it, and I, I think they do sign up. So yeah, <laughs> great. Uh, all, all, That's it, all really. Our, this all is the hello to, and goodbye <laughs> to John. And I'm sorry. Remind me of the name of your newish dog. The newish one, he's called Arlo. We don't know why he's called Arlo. Arlo. The, only, the only Arlo we know of is Arlo Guthrie, but I don't imagine that's why he's called Arlo. But, Great. Uh, Great. But yes, he's, uh, he's out in the rain with John at the moment. <laughs> the seafaring Arlo. Great, Sharon, thank you for calling. Love you very much. See you soon. See you. Thank okay. you for everything. Bye-bye. Okay. That's Sharon Wells from England, 610-616-3208. We turn to Erica and Amber Rose will be on deck. Thank you. So for my final words, it's funny, Jake kind of took a lot of what I was planning to say, including um, the reference to the Ann Lauterbach. So for for my final words, I want to, you know, be grateful for this community. Um, Modpo is always an incredible highlight of my fall semester. And more specifically, I want to shout out the office hours, which Zoom office hours are quite an extraordinary blessing. Um, I feel like I've gotten the opportunity to see a lot of familiar poems anew through the conversations that we've had. And I've gotten the chance to really dig into some of the poems I've never read. And those would include, you know, we had an excellent quick conversation about the two poems by Lauterbach. We've looked at Fred Wass, Sarah Dowling, and, um, And I guess in closing, I would say that this time around, I've been excited, you know, inspired again by by my office hours to spend time thinking differently about um, the poetical wager and about um, what we talk about as far as aleatory writing versus chance writing and how that connects to conceptual writing in week 10. And I'm 
thinking particularly about a quote from Joan Retallick, where she she talks a bit about her thinking behind the use of the word poetics as asking um, oneself always what is necessary for us right now to do through language. Mm -hmm. So thank you all, as always. Thank you, Erica. That's Erica Kaufman, everybody. Yeah. Love you as always. I was in your neck of the woods this weekend, and I didn't have a chance to stop by. I know, frown face. Sorry about that. But I'm coming back because I love that area of the world. Um, before we turn to Amber Rose, I just want to quote from the thread Matt Lutwin, who's actually technically not a rookie, though we met, got to know Matt this year for the first time. Um, I think Matt's done this. I, I could be wrong, but he's from Pittsburgh. He was here. We met him in person. He writes in part. So we've arrived at poems. Read them down and up and down again. Language upon the occasion of passion. Indelible views of the sky. Clouds converse. The rain is ours. What draws us to supposedly difficult poetry? I think that through it, we see our own unfolding. And in finding meaning, we find that we ourselves mean more. And to do so in community means the world. Thanks all for another season in this wonderful, puzzling light, quoting Ashbery, where the heart finds a home. And that's Matt Lutwin. Could that be any nicer? Ambrose, you've been set up emotionally. It's all yours. Thanks. Um, and I'm so sorry. I'm going to ask Sophia to be on deck. Okay. Sophia, you're on deck. Just a little warning. Anybody on double deck? You want to do double deck? We've well, never done do that. Do okay. Would that be helpful? Sophia, no. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, Just trying to be helpful. Hello, friends. Hello, uh, yeah, my final word. So I also am um, feeling especially grateful for the Zoom office hours this season. Um I honestly thought that I would sort of hate them, to be honest. Mm. I thought that they would be really like t late tiresome. And I was like, wow, talking to folks every, like, no. Um, and I did my first one, and actually I thought I was going to alternate between regular office hours and Zoom office hours. And after the first one, I was like, oh my goodness, they're all Zoom office hours, yeah. number one. And number two, I felt so grateful um, for the opportunity to engage with folks this way. Um, so I want to especially shout out my office hour crew, Appy, Denny, Vijaya, Kat, Lou, Miranda, Barbara, and Dee. Um, all stars. All stars, truly, and held it down with so much consistency. And a special shout out to Vijaya, who came to my very first office hour, and it was just the two of us. Um, and we got to talk about my dissertation and about me finishing and... Um, I learned more about her daughter and that was just such an important framing conversation. Um, this season of, of Modbo has been pretty special to me because I hope I intend for it to be the last season of Modbo while I am a PhD candidate. Meaning? Meaning I'm going to finish. to be yeah. an assistant professor on the tenure track come September. I'm definitely at least going to defend my dissertation. Oh, sorry. Did I, did I, uh... <laughs> Anybody out there hiring? Okay. Amber Rose Johnson. Anyway, but yes. So, um, no, so Al, who wouldn't want to hire you? No, I know. What the I hell's wrong with that. these people? Let's that. go. Let's go. Let's go. Hire Amber Rose now. So, yes. So this is and your final word. This is right. My final word, at least in that capacity. And uh, the Zoom office hour has allowed me to see an even brighter light all of the things that Modpo has given me um, and taught me about being a teacher or being a convener of conversations. And that could be any kind of conversation in any kind of room. Um, and I'm so grateful for that kind of generosity that I've learned. So that's one set of final thoughts. See, this is the problem with me coming early. I can take more time. The people at the end get crammed. Okay, so... A few final words that I pulled from my office hour folks. We were having a conversation about you, Al, on October 25th. God. We somehow ended up talking about you and how fantastic you are. 
and I pulled a couple of things. Kat McCriddle, we were talking about mm. you, um, how you encourage, how you meet folks right where they're at and you encourage folks, but how you're also this kind of like, just like, how the fuck, who, how do you do, how do you, how does that come together? I'm and Kat sprite. says, um, we were talking about your secret sauce and Kat said he wouldn't, you wouldn't want anyone to know your secret sauce. Because you love our secret sauce so much. Like, you're more wow. excited about that. I like that. Um, you model a kind of radical generosity that's a little odd and a little crazy. <laughs> Hannah Linden said you tested her British reticence, but you were just so nice. Um, Danny told a story about how he had sent his book in, and one day, after a long while, he finally called and you picked and and you got on and you said, Denny, I have your book right here. And he was flawed. Like, how did you just have that book right there? And you told him that you looked at it and that you liked it. And he felt totally blown out of the water. And the way that Modpo extends from your practice, Al, is that you make us feel like you're always making a place for us before we even arrive. And you've infused that into Modpo. Um, and Modpo makes people feel like we've all sort of been waiting for them to come into this community. And the way that we do that is through the TAs being welcoming and exciting, but also the folks that have been around sticking around and, and understanding how important that work is to make someone feel welcome and, and choosing to continue <laughs> to do that. Um, and it also takes new people continuing to make brave choices to be vulnerable with this with this whole poetry idea. Um, so I'm closing my final word with Vijaya's thought. Uh, and she said that something about Mod Poet changes something in you the longer you do it. Your strengths are the focus. The poem has always been there. It will always be there. This is about my journey, my personal journey. Amber Rose Johnson. Thank you. Snaps for Amber Rose. That's so sweet. Oh my God, Ambrose, you're killing me. Oh, and that's it. I mean, that's it. No more Ambrose. In Modpo, in our lives, always. always right? Wherever you are, I'm coming there. I'm going to watch you teach and be proud. Okay, so we are going to go to Sophia in a second, but we have someone on the phone. Chris, who is on the phone? Uh, we have another long distance call across the ocean calling from Madrid. We have Irene on the oh. line. <laughs> She got through. Yes. Irene. Hello. Hey there. How are you, my friend? My God, Amber Rose, you got me crying. Yes. So, yeah. Emotional yes. as every time I'm talking with you guys. How are you? <laughs> We're all good. Amber Rose was amazing. That was amazing. How is Madrid? Everything okay? It's not, I know it's not the writer's house, but you know, it's Madrid, a great city. Yeah, it's a great city. And yeah, as, as, you, as she was saying, like, I feel this is like spreading. The difference is spreading. So we don't have a writer's house yet, but we are working on it. It will happen. Are you going to make a writer's house there? I'm going to try. I don't know what I'm going to do, but let's try. <laughs> let's okay. try to do something. Okay. I'll tell you what. You make a writer's house, and we're going to Madrid. Lainey, can we do that? Absolutely. Okay. Oh, Sophia, is going, that all right? So. Yeah. Madrid, okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm already going. Okay. So it's okay. <laughs> Irene, do you want to take a minute for your final word? Sure. Yeah, I mean, like, my final word would be, like, um... Well, as a lot of people know, I this year I had the opportunity to to be there. I feel I had this privilege that was like to leave Modpo um, as a student, like, like as an online student in the beginning, and then to go to Modpo, which people should know that is not that different. I mean. The real motto, the real right house is amazing, but the way you manage to put all of that in a virtual environment and mm. make it a home for yeah. all of us is, I'm, I'm really, I'm surprised. I mean, it, it's amazing. And so I feel I was like, so I have such a privilege of being like 
working with you all, uh, I don't know, sitting at that table and going to class with, with you and with Lainey, everything was so inspiring. Um, yeah, I'm just like really grateful. And just to go back to the beginning, um, like this kind of, this year's adventure kind of started with the multiple anniversary, with the 10th year anniversary, um, in which we had like this opportunity of being like all together, all the people from from Modpo, like from Coursera, but a lot of people in the house and all these amazing guest poets in the table and all the students from university and all the TAs. And and I think it, this is really what Modpo is. I mean, this is such a giant community of so, so many and diverse people that can just come together and sit all together and talk all together that, yeah, I mean, I'm not saying anything that you all don't know, but. Thank you, Irene. It's just, I mean, it's just amazing that this exists. I'm, thank you very much. All right, you're <laughs> going to about to, get, thank you, Irene. You're about to get a treat. Paul, can you show the audience, please? I'm going to bring the microphone around to people whom you love and know, and they're just going to say hi to Irene, okay? <laughs> all right. Hi, Irene. I have your... I have your book sitting on my shelf. Very excited to read it. Um, hopefully I'll get to do that over Thanksgiving break or, or December. <laughs> Lucas was very sad because the, your last day in class, he was out and he really wanted to see you. But Gracias por todo, Irene. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Say hi. <laughs> hi, Irene. Uh, it's Daphne. I'm doing my own thing as usual. <laughs> Hi, Irene, this is Mateo. We all miss you, and having you here was the highlight of Modpo. Wow. Sammy? Um, hi, Irene. I hope you're doing well. Um, we all really do miss you and admire so much that you came here. Like, that's something I keep thinking about. It's so cool. Hi, Irene. It's Hannah. We all miss you so much, and hopefully we can come visit soon. Oh, got a little, uh, little uh, request for an invitation in there, Hannah. Nice move. Very slick. Hi, Irene, this is Lila. It was such a pleasure to meet you, and we really miss you, and I'm definitely going to come to Madrid. And sitting next to her a lot. <laughs> Hello, it's Julia. <laughs> I second everything Lila just said, and also wanted to thank you for the last thing you said to me, which I didn't really get to respond to because you were rushing out, but you told me it's not all that serious, and just enjoy everything, and that really resonated with me. So. Life advice? Wow. <laughs> Hi, Irene. It's Izzy. I, I just want to thank you again for coming and like having you in class was so inspiring and like coming for five weeks. Like that's incredible. And I just, oh, I look up to you so much. So thank you. Hi, Irene. It's Ellie. Thank you so much for coming. And I loved everything you had to say. And I didn't get to, si to sign your card. So consider this your thank you. <laughs> Hi, Irene. This is William. Um, it was nice to... Um, have your perspective as a as a practicing poet um and yeah i kind of wish i had been in that conversation with julia that sounds like a really <laughs> <laughs> okay irene we're going to move on but there's one more special person who happens to be here paul can you do this thank you so much <laughs> hi irene it is so nice i'm so glad you got to call in i miss you so much i'm so glad that we got to meet it was a special wonderful opportunity that Modpo gave me to meet you and be your friend, and I'm just so happy that you called in, and I miss you very much. All right, Irene, one more, and then we're going to hang up. Irene's book is unbelievable. So on her last day, I that night I sat and translating it word for word with my partner, who's a native Spanish speaker, and we were like, wow, this is unbelievable. And I, I see the link to Pizarnik, who I adore, Alejandro Pizarnik, and uh, Irene's going to be teaching a slowpoke class. So if you haven't met, oh, you've already hinted that Pizarnik. Irene is teaching a slowpoke class. Yeah, sorry, I'm letting the cat. That's back. okay. Anyway, I can't wait to visit you and hope you're having a great time and writing brilliantly. I'm sure you are. Okay, Irene. Daphne apologizes for being. Daphne-like, but actually, 
the thing about Daphne is that it's always fabulous, and that you need not apologize ever for Daphne likeness. Okay, Irene, love you. That's, We're gonna we talk later. Bye bye. Okay, that bye. was Irene. bye. Irene calling from Madrid. Now we turn to Sophia, and Gabby will be on deck. Um. Okay, I apologize first and foremost for how I look and sound right now. I'm a little under the weather, um, if you couldn't tell. Um, you never have to <laughs> apologize for Sophia. It's always <laughs> fabulous. Thanks, Emma Rose. Um, yeah. I, Irene, I miss you a lot. And I also sat down and started tr- translating um, part of your book, which I'm much slower at. Um, but I love what I've been able to do. Um, anyway, and I look forward to seeing you in Madrid. Um, I, I don't like explaining to people what my job is because I feel like I never do it adequately. And I don't think my job title gives people any sort of indication how much, how many people I am like so fortunate enough to get to work with every day and all of the if I, I hate telling someone, oh, I have to, I have this event at work and they ask what the event is and it's, and I feel like they never truly understand how much I want to be there. And this, these webcasts are a part of my job and a part of like the responsibilities of my, um, deepening, um, participation with Modpo, but I don't like explaining it as a job or as an obligation the same way. I don't like telling people that Al is my boss because Al is a lot more than my boss. Um, He is the most generous mentor I have ever had and I've ever seen. Um, He knew, like, my freshman year here at Penn, he knew I couldn't afford to go home for Thanksgiving, and he opened up his home to me. And I think I've spent Thanksgiving with him for five years. Um, We're very upset you're not going to join us this year, but that's okay. It's another story. Um. And so, yeah, I, I don't like telling people that Al is my boss because our his mentorship with me and his um, belief in me um, it is more than that relationship. Um, and I so thank you always. Um, I started a grad school program this year. I'm uh, pursuing a master's in poetry at Temple. So I spend a lot of time reading and thinking about poetry. Um, And I was incredibly worried that I would be burned out by the time we got to our 10th week in Modpo. Um, And now I kind of feel like that worry was a little silly because it's difficult to be burnt out when you get to discuss your favorite thing in the world with people who are so generous and kind and excited to talk about it. Um, so I want to say thank you to everyone, every person in the Modpo community who makes my belief in love and poetry stronger because of yours. Um, I wanted to say thank you to Lainey for being such an incredible model of hard work and humility and kindness. Um, I think it's, I don't know how you do what you do in a single day. Um, and I wanted to say thank you to our brick and mortar Modpo class, our in-person Modpo class this year for letting me be a part of your learning journey, um, for listening to me and for contributing so fully and deeply. Um, I It's very strange to leave a class that I'm co-teaching to go to a class that I'm learning in. And I... And, um, but, you know, you guys make that kind of weird experience of, like, really wonderful. Um, and you're just, um, how you come to these poems inspires me. Um, and I've been with these poems for a long time now. So, um, yeah, thank you. So and, and thank you, Chris and Zach and Paul. Y'all don't get thanked enough. So, Sophia DuRose. Thank you, Sophia. That was so fabulous and lovely. Yes, and Chris and Zach do not get enough credit, but we're going to give and them Paul, a mic. And, and Paul, of course, and Paul. And Paul. Shout Mr. out Paul Mr. back Mr. there. Mr. Zoom. He's new the best man, Zoomer. New man on the okay. block. We're going to give them a chance to, <laughs> to have their final words. But um, as we turn to Gabby, I just want to quote another from the thread. This would be our wonderful C.J. Prince. 
I flowed, I listened, and most important, I joined in office hours, <laughs> trying for once a week at least and finding that smaller exchange so gratifying. And last year when I found Ray, Ray Maxwell, or did, or did he find me, and we read all of the leaves of grass in one sitting with others in various countries, I understood the universe of Mod Po was ever evolving and opening doors, and sometimes the doors hang at a slant, and then an open mic, and Kat and Terry and I became friends, and Denny, surprise, just lives down the road, and reconnecting with Stanley, and after exchanging postcards for the last few years, and what was the question? Lainey Brown, next year, yes, next year, office hours, you are a delight in your diamond glasses and your wild mind. And that was C.J. Prince. <laughs> I love that. Okay, let's turn to Gabby, and we'll have Max on deck. Hi. Um, well, I think I want to say two things that seem related in my mind, but may not be. Um, so... One of the things I've always liked about ModPo, which I think is one of its more intimidating aspects that maybe is not exactly like quite user friendly, is that we've become this like veritable archive of interpretation between ModPo proper, ModPo plus, the many hundreds of videos, the now anthology of 50 Poets on 50 Poems, the like database, et cetera. Like we are really, it's kind of a pen sound, but for like, us interpreting poems from the American tradition, which is like a weird thing for a, a course to be, but a really lovely thing for a course to be. Now, all that stuff happens at like a serious distance. Like you can kind of do this anywhere. And that's always what's like exciting about ModPo. But I have to say that I like really enjoyed the trip to Chicago. I really enjoyed having some of this stuff be more fleshy and in person and seeing the the wires and the people. And <laughs> for me, I think like the last few years, my involvement in ModPo has always been at a distance, you know, with the pandemic and with moving to Chicago, I've been on the this little box. And this just reminded me of sort of the roots of like how I came into ModPo, which was basically like, what what Sophia de Rose is doing like I, I you know I was once a TA for the brick and mortar and then started doing this and it was really nice to be in the room again and it was nice to have people there and and I got a lot of like warmth in my heart from uh, Vijaya visiting us and uh, her daughter-in-law saying like just how much Modpo has sort of brightened her um Vijaya that is um I just thought that was really lovely. So I think I'm, I think what I'm saying is that I'm celebrating the fact that we're like an intimidatingly vast at a distance archive. And also every so often we're like a very, a small group of people in a room. Mm -hmm. I like that. And we like you. Gabby, thank you. <laughs> I like that you was, too. <laughs> it was so fun hanging out with you a lot. It was so fun. You are really awesome. Uh, you really are. And, you know, we didn't need reminding of that, but it was good to get it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gabby. Before we turn to Max, uh, quoting Jennifer Levin, Jenny, uh, and mentions Max, so it's a good setup for Max. Um, Jenny says, Ma Mod, Mod Poe is magnificent. Thank you for making me welcome. Much more relaxed the second time around. And for those of you who are first timers, listen to Jenny. It's more relaxed the second time around. A special thank you to Max, who's ETZM, European Time Zone Meetup meetings, inspired me to come back into Mod Poe. They make a big difference, a chance to learn, close reading in a live group which continues outside the 10 week symposium mode. Still learning to say I love slash like and be less critical. So there you go, thank you Jenny. And now we turn to Max and I'm gonna ask Kate to be on deck. Um, despite that wonderful setup, I'm going to punt to Ali Castleman who has asked me to swap. Okay. You can slot me in either where you were going to put Allie why out you or be on, I mean, why you, you be you're on the MC, so you, you know what to do. Yeah, I do know what to do. If, um, this is not my first webcast rodeo. Um, <laughs> so thanks, Max. So um, Ambrose is getting her wish. So uh, Max will go to Allie. Max will be on deck and Kate will be on. Double 
double deck. Double deck. <laughs> you see, we did it. Double deck. It's been achieved. How weird we are. The little pleasures. Uh, so, Allie? Sorry, I have to leave in five minutes, so I wanted to make sure um, I got a chance to say something. Um, first, I just want to put on the record that I want to come to Scotland. Uh, oh, okay. Somehow or another. Okay. Uh, Zach is smiling, and Chris, too. Maybe you can, like, carry gear... Um, deal with the spaghetti. Yeah, yeah, no, like sign me up. I'll, I'll do, okay. I'll do whatever. Lainey, I have a feeling uh-huh. this is going to be a slippery slope, but duly noted, Allie. Proceed. Um, <laughs> I've been, I've been thinking about just being at the ten-year birthday celebration in September, um, and how. That week, like being uh, at the writer's house with so many people, some of whom I've met before and spent a lot of time with some of whom um, I've conversed with for years, but had never met in person. That feels like a long time ago, like September. It feels like a lot of of time has passed since September. Um, And yet when I think about like the 10 years (laughs) or maybe even 11 at this point, because I know we were kind of off. um, it kind of feels like no time has passed at all. Um, and there's this like interesting, almost like time warp thing that happens with Modpo, where again, like thinking about the past 10 years on a personal level or certainly on a political level, it just seems like ginormous things have changed. Um, and yet there's something really special and like important and profound about how. I feel like the Mod Po journey, I mean, you can trace it, you know, on a scale of 10 years, but there's something, there's an arc that happens in these 10 weeks. And then, you know, just year to year um, for people who stick around for slow Po and just, you know, whatever kind of small kind of um, or more contained uh, kind of like ride that you happen to be on with whatever poems Um, or poets you're paying attention to, um, like that feels like the kind of like change that's happening. Um, and yet this course like remains a place to come back to and, uh, and kind of just like pick off, pick up right back where you left off from. Mm -hmm. Um, so I just feel really grateful for that, uh, for that kind of like timelessness, because I think it captures something that feels kind of like true about brains, which is that um, a lot can kind of change externally, but those kind of like shifts uh, that like happen in your mind, which like makes me think of like, you know, Emily Dickinson and uh, and swerving. Um, I don't know, it's, it's like, there's this epiphanic nature to them that um, kind of just, can always bring you back to a, a similar moment. Um, Allie, so I'm just grateful for Modpo kind of like creating that place. What you described, a mind in relation to duration and community is a complicated thought, and I would love for you to write it because it's, I've tried to write about Modpo, but I tend to get caught up in long paragraphs about how we actually do the work and how it's structured and a little bit about pedagogy, but I've never tried to understand the way the mind works in relation to a poem through duration, um, a familiarity that also has a difference. You're talking about a complex of affinities, affinity, TA, TA, the person who's got a durational relationship to the material as a teacher and as a constant student, the poem, the interpretation, the new people, the, the veterans, all that in flux is a complex of affinities at what we used to call loose ties that need to be described. And you went a long way toward it in these final words. And it's kind of an amazing thing. And I don't think, you know, we, the ability to do the bandwidth and the Coursera-like structures that were set up only 10 years ago, the ability to do this technologically is relatively recent. And I don't think it's been, I've read all the books and articles about this and it hasn't been sufficiently described and it needs to be, it needs to be. 
my final word at the very end is going to be about the supposed learning loss during online learning in the pandemic, which I think is bullshit. Um, and I'm going to say why I think it's bullshit. But I think a rejoinder to the henny pennyism of, um, oh my God, online learning, it's the devil, it's awful, nobody likes it. We really need not only a more nuanced response to that, but we need to start a positively what happens. And it's not just the testimony of the Modpo people that we've been reading or the people on the phone, but we who've witnessed it firsthand all those years. That's sort of what you're saying. Thank you, Allie. Thank you so much. Love you. Snaps for Allie Castleman, an original Modpo TA. Thank you. And now we have someone on the phone after which we're going to turn to Max. Uh, yeah, first, just to shout out, uh, we received a uh, text message, or mm -hmm. a Skype message, really, from uh, Harini, who says they're oh. 15 and an, an inspiring poet and an amateur, and just saying that the course has been a tremendous help in their pathway to learning the nuances of oh, poetry. I remember Harini from last year. Hello, Harini. Yeah. Well, so this is yet another way that people can be chatting with us? This is uh, ridiculous. <laughs> My God, yeah. it never ends. I know. I, I wasn't expecting it. It just popped up. Okay, like, cool. Oh, I'll read it. Do we have yeah. someone on the phone? We also have uh, Shantine calling. Shantine. Yes, on the line from Jersey City. Shantine, I got something Hello? for you. Hey, buddy, I got something for you. The other day in class, I brought down the photograph of Erica Baum's Jersey City Jesus, Jersey City to Jesus. And I was thinking about you because <laughs> you're in Jersey City. And I don't want to say anything yeah, more I'm about Christianity and all that stuff. I didn't want to riff too much on that, but I was thinking about you. How are you? Thank you. Um, I'm doing well. How are you all? Great. Should we let the cat out of the bag? Shantine is going to be coming back, I think it's on December 6th, to be part of a Poem Talk episode. That's so great. Come on, Yay. people, react to that. Yay. Yeah, Shantine. Okay. Do you want to do your final word? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's so hard to follow everybody who's been so amazing and saying such wonderful things. I think Amber Rose pretty much encapsulated, I think, what a lot of us think of you, Al, um, and how generous of a mentor you are. Um, but definitely, I feel really um, grateful because, you know, ModPo is open to everyone, and that included me. Um this random person who just stumbled upon Modpo and was so warmly embraced by this whole, like amazing community that was really wonderful and uplifting and encouraging when I was in my existential crisis of what to do with my life. Um, and, you know, I feel sad that I wasn't able to participate as much in the forums this year as last year, but, um, knowing Modpo was happening was just very encouraging to me as I started my MFA um, in writing this year. Thanks in part to the encouragement for Modpo, it just uh, felt like this community that helped me is like there meeting, talking about poetry as I'm going to school, meeting, talking about poetry. So it was just a really great um, encouragement to know that we are doing this at the same time. Um, yeah, and I, I'm just wondering how many new or old poets have been encouraged through ModPo, probably mm. countless. Mm. Um, and I love how non-writers are also able to find a home in ModPo, too. Um, so thank you to everyone. Thank and you, Shantine. You're, <laughs> I mean, easy to, easy to feel like a mentor to you. You're such a star. You, you were clearly not sure what the heck to do when you found us last year, and we had, you came to visit. And it was great. I mean, and your choice to do MFA, how fantastic. And Lainey and I and some others had some fun having drinks with you in New York. And we look forward to your coming back on December 6th. You're part of this community, even if you do live in Jersey City. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Shantine. <laughs> Be Thank well. You. See you soon. That's Shantine calling from Jersey City, New Jersey. How exciting. She's the best. Uh, we're going to turn to Max with Kate on deck. Hi, Max. Hey, Al. Um, I want to start by uh, just seconding what uh, Jake, Erica, and many others have so far said about the Zoom office hours. Like, 
it was a real treat, a real, uh, this is my first year doing it. I know, I know we were talking about doing it last year a little bit, but I jumped on the bandwagon for this year and it was uh, definitely it revolutionized the idea of, of the office, the, the Magpo office hour for me. Um, and I'm glad that we're, you know, we are finding new and exciting uses for Zoom, even in the midst of our collective Zoom fatigue. <laughs> um, and um, I was so uh, delighted too to hear um, what you read out from Jenny Levin, Al, uh, about um, how much she's enjoyed uh, some of the the uh, some of the, the Zoom conversations and how much that sort of like reattached her to Magpo. And, and Jenny is one of the people I wanted to um, to shout out. So I wanted to to use my office hour or my office hour. She's uh, my my last word in part here to. Um, uh, just to shout out a few folks, uh, folks who came to my office hour, folks who came to the European time zone meetup, um, the, the few that we've held so far this year, uh, I'm just going to read a few names out quickly. Um, so Jenny, of course, uh, but also Michael Dembril in Spain came to my office hours, uh, Dylan Fritz in Philly came, Terry Talty in New Mexico, Barbara Nielsen, um, Denny Stern was a regular, and some of these folks were also regular attendees of the European Time Zone Meetup group, um, in addition to uh, other European Time Zone regulars like Mary, Farrell, uh, Jeroen from the Netherlands, Kurt in Rome, uh, of course, Stanley in New Mexico, who's not on European time, but it fits with his schedule, so I'm really glad that he keeps showing up, uh, Mark Baal. Anna Dupre, uh, Vijaya, Christy Williamson, uh, Yunya Denker, Lee Mast, CJ Prince, Vijaya, Carolyn Davies, uh, Christiane Meunier, uh, Susanna Margano. Um, and I'm definitely forgetting somebody. And if I forgot you, I'm so, so sorry. Uh, but I hope to make it up to you in one way or another. Um, and I just want to use this briefly to plug the fact that there will be one more European Dime Zone meetup uh, meeting of the season, um, most likely of. 2022, at least as far as I'm, as far as I will be facilitating, that will be on Saturday at 3 p.m. Um, and we will be, uh, that'll take place on Zoom. And we, one of the poems that we'll be reading is uh, John Ashbery's And Ut Victoria Poesis is her name. And I just wanted to read um, the first two lines of that because I think that they, they really fit with what you, Al, and Ali Castleman were just talking about, this, this sort of this sense of something you can return to um, over, you know, in the context of Magpo now, over a decade and perhaps even longer periods of time. So Ashbury writes, in Ut Pictoris Poesis is her name, bothered about beauty, you have to come out into the open, into a clearing and rest. And Love I think that, that that's, that's a sum up, a potential sum up of, of Magpo, but also maybe of this experience that Ali is trying to put into words, which I also share. Of of this these weird senses of time and place that are hard to reconcile with one another, but make a certain kind of sense. Uh, a very fast, you know, a, a very filled decade on one hand, a very fast decade on another, um, and something you can something like Modpo that sort of that forms a common thread there that you can keep coming back to mm -hmm. a place to sort of ponder beauty, grapple with it, mm -hmm. um, and rest. Come out into the clearing. Just love that. Bothered by beauty, it's time to come out into the clearing. Not go further, deeper into the woods. Yeah. Love that. Um, as we turn to Kate, I just want to quote someone else from the thread. This is Alexander Goudier, um, who's This is Modpo for the first time for Alexander. Um, he writes, I would have been skeptical about the value of close reading poems made up of airport codes or of erasure poetry, et cetera. But my view has completely changed. In fact, some of the poets from weeks nine and 10 are now my favorites out of all the poets we studied. And some of the students in our class have had the same experience. Thank you for offering such a high caliber course, course for free. Think about it. I have spent more time on Mod Poe than I ever thought I would, and it has been delightful. I did not find it easy to balance Mod Poe with work, my job, and other things in my life. My one regret this year is not having time to attend office hours or any of the meetup groups. I hope to get involved in these next year and to explore more of Modpo Plus. Alexander, welcome to our community. And now we turn to Kate with Jason on deck. 
Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Kate. Hi. I miss being at that green table with you. Um, but well, you I gotta am... come again. Right, right away. Get on the next train. Come hang we out. We miss you, Kate. We miss you. That was so much fun hanging out with you. Get on any train for you guys. Okay. Um, but I'm also grateful for my seat at this table. Um, and to add to a lot of what's been said, I'm really appreciative of the collective slow attention that Mod Po requires and fosters, um, which gets harder and harder to find elsewhere in the world. And observing my own modulating relationship to each of these poems over time just gives me so much pleasure. And I, I learn from it and everyone contributing to it so much. Um, I also had some amazing Zoom office hours this fall. And uh, among the revolving contributors, I had Barbara, Vijaya, Terry, Denny, Appy, Christina, and Wendy show up frequently. And just the other day, we spent the whole hour, more than an hour, one an hour and 15 minutes, I think, just discussing Fred Waugh's poem selves. And I think that conversation had carried over from someone else's office hour, but it just <laughs> like it, it it needed more. Um, and we just had the most remarkable conversation. Um, I could have talked to them forever mm. about that one poem. And that for me is, is everything as a poet and a reader. Um, and I thank you all for for having me among you and all of your brilliant minds. Thank you, Kate. Kate Colby, everybody. Yeah. Thank you, Kate. Really appreciate you being part of this. And so glad that you have your annual, what do we call that? Pilgrimage? Anyway, <laughs> your annual <laughs> hangout with us. As I turn to Jason, I want to acknowledge Jason, who is for the from the very beginning has always been a particular and also general theoretical supporter of any participation in this online course from folks who feel a neuro difference, um, who are atypical in the way that they read and think and maybe even speak. Um, you have been the greatest champion of those folks um, and you've led the way in thinking about that. Um, Vikram Kumar is part, Vic is part of Modpo this year for the first time. Vic is uh, a non-speaking autistic person. I believe he lives in India. At least I know the family is there. Um, Vic has done all of Modpo. Vic is going to be requesting a certificate, a statement of completion, which is amazing. Vic and I have been emailing, also Vic's parents, and I have the sense that it takes a long time for Vic to write, or I should say to type, um, what he wants to say, he's done all of the paper essays, he's done all of the responses to others' essays, and he recently contributed um, a the, sec the fourth essay, which is really a response to either the Jackson McClough, no, it's actually John Cage's Mesostics, or a Bernadette Mayer a writing experiment. And Vic decided to do a writing experiment. And this experiment speaks to Vic's absolutely radical and extraordinary sensibility as a person who instead of arriving at being able to write language, which is actually a fairly recent thing for Vic. Vic has only been using language to communicate for a few years. This is, this is a relatively late thing. And instead of going right to that, from that experience, uh, I, which I imagine was revelatory, to writing about himself and to speaking for himself about himself and finding identity that way, he is as interested in what Bernadette is suggesting we do, which is to find other voices, to find a way of dissociating ourselves from our own voice to try to connect with other people. An amazing thing for Vic to be able to do this so rapidly. It takes people years of meditation, years of thinking um, uh, 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 about how we can suppress the ego in the way we use language. And Mod Po is kind of all about that. So I just want to quote a couple of lines from a poem that Vic wrote. And Vic 
Here's the intro Vic wrote. Looking at Bernadette Mayer's long list of writing experiments, I would like to submit this poem written by me based on the news, newspaper, um, published on the front page of newspapers in the last few months. And this is the last four lines of Vic's rendering of headlines. Disunited nations argue on who to feed based on color of eyes. Crossing boundaries, judged by histories, written not by the vanquished. Papers, signed, relinquished, land. And scarred prisoner exchanges. Did God's creations, your trophies, ever belong to you? I just want to say, holy fuck. Vic, that is an amazing poem. And you're really speaking for the world there through the newspapers. I don't know what to say. I'm just amazed. I turn to Jason now, who of all people is the champion of, of a, a MOOC being a place for difference of that sort. So Jason, sorry to set you up so narrowly, so specifically, <laughs> but I know you have something to say. So here you are. Um. So my computer collapses onto my face. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Yeah, actually, there's an account on Instagram, a mother of a boy who has um, a speech impairment, autism, who I'm planning on inviting to join ModPo for next year. Um it could be that we're onto something and that uh, that minds that work atypically in circuit with other minds through the kind of blood of language um that you know the most unexpected and healing things might occur um it's not so articulate but i think that um for me it's been uh an incredible just i'm i'm so firm firmly atheist, but it's like said been such a blessing to have stumbled in to Modpo at the beginning and just seen it grow over the years. And at certain points Modpo held me up and sustained me. And um all the people who Al has brought together in terms of the staff and people around the world, it's it's just um, it's nice that there's not a waiting list to get into this class. <laughs> um, yeah, so I was gonna thought of like two little things. One one thing is. Um, I, in in doing Zoom, when I was a kid, I used to be obsessed with this game show called Hollywood Squares, where you would have like a grid of like a tic-tac-toe board. And the most memorable thing that ever occurred in that show was Betty White was in the center square and she suddenly pulled out a skillet and started frying up bologna and made bologna sandwiches for everyone. <laughs> and um, the, the, I think something that we will have to be experimenting with, I'm just thinking about this now, is, is this format of, of Zoom. I mean, in a way, like, in a classroom, you can activate all different modes of learning. 
know, bodily, oral, visual, all, all different things. But no matter how much I love Zoom, I want to like, like, like do something to the, I want to take the spirit of the poets of this course and um, take this amazing technology that allows us to connect in real time around the whole globe and see what more we can even do with it. I have no idea. Um, but I just wanted to read two uh, little poems. One thing we, I mean, I have, I had amazing office hours. One moment, one office hour, we were reading uh, February by James Schuyler and Vijaya brought up the Sun Temple in India, which is the temple on the beach on the East Coast that is there to greet the sun as it rises. And she said, well, could this temple that is being kind of mentioned next to the UN, like is the UN a temple? And we said, sure, it's like a temple to peace, to secular peace. And then we just looked up a picture of the Sun Temple. And every single color from February was streaking across this image. It was just a, like a miraculous moment. And so many of those moments happened this year. Um, and so yeah, I'll just read three tiny poems by Charles Bernstein and one by the uh, Nanook Akpik from her new book, Blood Snow, um, which the Philly Modpo group is going to be discussing on Saturday. <coughs> the Philly Modpo group is open to everyone. So if you're curious about the Philly Modpo group, um, you can send me an email. Um, so Charles Bernstein writes, this poem, animation, here, where, there, is. <laughs> and poem titled, At Sunset After the Plum Blossoms Begin to Fall and the Chill of the Evening Envelopes Us Like Wanderers on a Carousel Swept Up in the Music I know you've heard this before, but that time I meant it. <laughs> Charles can tell it in a way that will elicit chuckles and laughter from people, but my flat delivery renders everything uh... <laughs> If you get to know me, you realize that I'm almost never being serious. The more serious I sound, the less I am, but this poem I really like. It's very short. From Nook, uh, Nook Akpik. It's called Light Years of Humans. Absence, presence, may be a way. Humans in deep verse. A mockingbird tangled inside a body. That's it. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Jason. Beautiful. Jason Suska, everybody. Yay. Thank you, Jason. Love you. We turn without any re without any prep to Chris Martin for a final word. Chris Martin speaks. Who, me? Yes, and Kamara will be on deck. Hi, Kamara. Chris Martin. Yes, there is nobody currently on the line, so okay, I guess it's just up. me. It's just you. I guess it's just me. It's just oh, my you. gosh. Go ahead. Where to start? Uh, I can't believe it's been... 10, 11 years, however long we've been doing this, I always remember when this first started. I was pretty new here at Penn. I was here when I passed Al, and he said something that he said, we're going to do something really cool. And I had no idea what that meant, and he said he would tell me more later. And it was Modpo. And uh, it's just crazy. It's To be doing something for 10, to be doing anything for 10 or 11 years is a really long time. And uh, I'm really excited that it's just as exciting and just as fun uh, and meaningful after all these years to still be doing Modpo. It's 
great to come up with new ideas and find new ways to connect with students. It's, uh, I want to shout out all the students out there who take the course. That makes this so meaningful um, to me as a tech person. I work on a whole lot of different stuff across the university. But what makes this so cool is that it affects so many students all around the world. So to get to use technology for something like that is just amazing to me. So thank you uh, for joining the, the course and being a part of this community. It, it really, really means a lot. It was so much fun to get back on the road again, Chicago, New York. So much fun to, to meet up with so many people and to uh, you know get to do that again. So really grateful for that opportunity. And uh, I want to shout out also uh, Paul Burke. Thank you so much for all your help. It, really appreciate it. And uh, Zach Gardner over here, my partner in crime. We spent nearly 2,000 miles in a car together over the past month or two. <laughs> and uh, Zach took the lead on packing all the gear we needed to do, two webcasts on the road. And that's a zillion little tiny detailed things. And he remembered every single thing, uh, which is just incredible. So uh, really, really appreciate that. So thank you, Zach. Chris Martin, everybody, you're so modest, Chris. You're always so modest, but you're totally amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank totally you. amazing and such a pleasure to work with. Um, and calm, which is really hard to do in IT support, I have to say. Um, so now let's turn to Kamara, followed by Zach. Hi, Kamara. Hi. The sun is okay? just doing stuff. I know the sun is really in my just just, oh, just zone makes, today. Your radiance is coming through as a physics matter. <laughs> Thank you very much. Physics is doing its thing out here. Okay, <laughs> um, uh, light particles and all. Well, I'm so happy to be here. The final words and to see everyone. Um, not everyone, but everyone I can I can see right here. Um, and. Uh, in terms of this season of ModPo, um, 10 years, okay, so I did prepare some thoughts on this and now they feel like slipping away from me. But the main theme, I guess, that was really, I don't know, meaningful to me this season is that I feel like I was reminded of a lot of the reasons why I... I don't know, uh, like started writing poems and caring about poetry this season. Um, one In one of my office hours, we collectively listened to part one of Howl, which I don't know if anyone has talked about yet, but I was in my office hour, I was kind of like, oh, let's listen to a part of it. And they were like, why don't we listen to the whole thing? And I was like, why not? <laughs> and so we sat there and listened to the whole thing and it was one of my favorite moments of just like collective listening and like live interpretation afterwards and um i started poetry in in high school in a spoken word club where you just showed up and other poets started reading and you would just listen together and talk to the poet right there and um it was really meaningful for me to do that in our small little art um, office hours. Shout out to Matt and Barbara and Lou and everyone who came. Um, that was really um, the heart of my mod post season this time around. Um, and the other thing that I was gonna say is that um, I also was thinking a lot about the ways in which the poets and poems of this week are connected through dedications and acknowledgments and um, references, not just references, but like all of these mini like fours and dedications. And I think that it's really, there's a lot of curation in Modpo, but there's also a lot of curation and connection in these little, little poems themselves. And I think they're all little, little networks and villages. Um, mm -hmm. And I like to think about that in my own work in like mod in a grand macro scale and in a, on a little micro scale that even if we're reading these individual poems and we're looking at them on the page, there's so many more connections outside the page as well. And I like to think of myself and my little remote work is also part of that. 
um, never really truly isolated. Um, and I guess I'll just thank not only everyone in my office hours, but also all the um, TAs and Al and everybody else. I just um, really appreciate that I'm still along for this ride and still here. So that's my final word. Thank Thanks. you, Kamara Brown. Yay, Kamara, thank you so much. It's very lovely and it's great to, to, to have you part of this community after all this time. Um, I want to turn to Zach for final words, followed by Lainey on deck, and Al is on double deck. That would be me. Uh, Christina, then Al, so I'm on triple deck. Zach. You're in the double hole, Al. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's bad. Um, for, well, first I want to reflect. You have to get runners on in order for my at-bat <laughs> to mean ducks, anything. Okay, so your apologize. job is to get a single, Zach. <laughs> uh, well, I actually I have a triple for you, so sorry about that. But um, first I want to reflect Chris. Uh, what he was saying before, um, Chris is great. Uh, he can make a 12-hour road trip feel like a 12-minute road trip. So, appreciate how does he for do that. that, Zach? What's his talent? Just, it's just his all-around, his charm, just <laughs> soothing presence. Uh, I want to say it puts me right to sleep, but I don't mean that. Um, I, I want to read some highlights from the YouTube chat that I kind of that made me feel warm. Things uh, Stanley Saber said, "I drink out of my KWH mug every day." <laughs> Oh, Stanley. Uh, Jane Ward says, Modpo is the best of all online learning that I've experienced. And then Chihilika Kumar says, come to Dubai. So, And I noticed that there, were, there was a sizable Dubai presence in the chat today. So just putting that hey, on the radar. Hey, Dubai. <laughs> Forget Scotland. We're going to Dubai. What do you think? That'd be a little expensive. I think Dubai could probably afford to pay for our... Oh! Our hey, Dubai people. Can you <laughs> bring us there on your dime? Um... And uh, and I guess my my last thought is I'm probably breaking like an NDA by saying this, but just stay tuned for some exciting new features coming to Modpo this uh, off season. Did Could we make stay you tuned sign the, an NDA for I the good shit? Um, I don't can, know. We can say what what you're I'm not what to we're say. referring to. Go ahead and say it. Describe. Uh, well, one th well, I feel like I'm I'm stealing Chris and maybe your thunder. I feel you should say it. I feel you should say it. Why don't you say it and I'll just follow up. All right. Well. We're <laughs> We're um we're getting ready to release, which I feel like Chris has put most of the work into this. Um, but we're releasing a uh, a searchable database of every single item in Modpo, um, soon on modpo.org. So you'll be able to actually easily find things that were once very difficult to find, um, in the course. Yep. Uh, and you just let the cat out of the bag by saying modpo.org. It's there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, could, you could probably figure out how to do it, but we will announce it, and it yeah. is an extraordinary thing because, as you've noticed. The you know, with all due respect to this Coursera platform, it was meant for four or five week courses with a single syllabus operating once and then going away and then coming back. Modpo is open and ongoing, and it's got a lot of stuff in it. And by now, Modpo Plus is so huge, and we can't navigate to individual poems. You actually have to learn to use Control F in order to just search the Modpo pa Plus page. It's impossible to find things. That's not the fault of that platform, the Coursera platform, we just, Modpo has just expanded beyond. So we created modpo.org. And for several years, thanks to a really wonderful grant of donation from Chris Foreman, who's a Modpo guy in Los Angeles, we've been able to create this total and absolute searchable database. And we're very excited to announce it. We'll send you more details soon with links. And you will be able to construct your own syllabus. So if you're interested in taking to setting up your own mini course on Emily Dickinson and her influence. You can just type in Emily Dickinson or Dickinsonian and you can get weeks and weeks of materials all organized and in order. It's a total amazing thing. Chris Martin, how did I do? Did I describe that pretty well? Uh, yes, I think you did, Al. It's, it's very exciting to, to be bringing this. We've been talking about this for years and working on it for the past three years, I think. Amazing. Three so years of work. It's been a major project, and there's close to 2,000 items in the... Uh, yeah, who knew, right? Between Modpo, Modpo Plus, TRC, and CCCR. So 2,000 items. So yeah. you think of Modpo as, oh, there's 80 poems in the main syllabus, and then there's, I don't know, 100 or so. And Actually, there's 2,000 items there. I mean, this is like a thing. Gabe... Gabby was right. Gabby was talking about this as a kind of archive, sort of a cousin to Pensan. Well, it certainly is. So thank you. Thank you, Zach. Thanks so much. Okay, we're going to turn to Christina, who needs a mic. 
Here, Christina, this, I think this will work. Yep, it is. Hello. Hello. Um, so I just wanted to say that Modpo has been the most amazing surprise, and if I cry, it's just because I have so many feelings <laughs> about it. And when I signed up, I signed up for a poetry class that just happened to fit in my schedule. My daughter was very excited um, that mommy was finally doing poetry <laughs> um, because she's already a poet, and um, it's, um, it's really been a life-changing thing. And I, to have found a community where poetry is the connection and the catalyst for these amazing um, conversations, like Kate was referencing, that I got to be a part of that conversation at the, the last office hours that she had. It just, it, and she and Kate said an amazing thing in the office hours that poetry is the language that helps us connect with all these things. There's so many things that happen in the universe that we can't take in with our five senses. So I'm totally <laughs> riffing off Kate here. This is her, but I really stayed with me that she said that. But poetry is the language and the, the medium too. And I'm probably not even saying it as well as she did, but that it just allows us to connect with those things that we know are there that we can't quite take in. And that just resonated with me so much. And um, and Al, I wanted to say thank you to you because when you first heard, when I reached out and I was so excited when I first started taking the class and realized it was so much more than poetry um, and that I didn't know what poetry could do or be, um, you took the time out of your very busy schedule to send personal welcome to me, my daughter, and we could wel were welcome at any time. That really meant a lot to me. To, that, to be so welcome, I've heard that other people say that, you know, it's such an open-hearted community and I could just see through the videos, like, what an open-hearted guy you are. And I just was like, that really, it touched me. And it was uh, great to meet you and to meet the TAs that were in the videos and to, like, meet Allie in person at the, and Max. I got to go to Max's office hours. And so, and I also have been waiting <laughs> the whole time to give a shout-out to Jason, who took the time out of his very busy schedule to spend an entire hour just with my daughter because she came to, she's 12, and she loves poetry, and she went to one of the office hours, and he let her read a part of the poem, and then... But we didn't get to the poem she wanted to talk about. So he's like, well, you know, let's set up a separate time. So he took the time to just, him and Zoe, one-on-one, -on -one, to discuss a Dickinson poem. And it just, that meant a lot to me, too, that he would just include her in such a way. It was so sweet. And so I just want to say thank you. Thank you to everyone. It's been amazing and, and uh, really grateful to be here. Thank you, Christina. Thank you so much. That was lovely. And we're so glad you're part of this community. Please stay and come to the Writer's House anytime. So we turn now to the amazing Lainey Brown. It's not Lainey Brown Day, but you know what, Lainey? Every day is <laughs> Lainey Brown Day. You knew that was coming. And, that, and following that will be me for the final, final word, and then we'll be done for the season. Lainey, it's all yours. Wow. I'm just hearing everyone's words resounding, and it's, it's amazing. It's really amazing. I have to start with thanking Al for being being everywhere and doing everything. I, I can't even tell you how many times I thought, okay, I need to respond to this, and I look at it, and you've already done it. It's like, oh, I can't, I can't. We should probably stop doing that so you will respond. You could. Yeah. Yeah, that anyway, it never, it never ceases to amaze me, your, your boundless energy and enthusiasm for poetry, and just the, just the vision to create this space and, but not just the vision, but then the every day and the every night constantly more, 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 more enthusiasm, more poetry, more. I mean, it's, it's just fantastic and it's, it's energizing. And then um, I, I just wanted to say thank you to Modpo people everywhere, here, in the room, on the screen, in the forums. I had a very Vesuvius at home kind of fall, um, really challenging and I found that the dedication of everybody to the poetry was just a constant reminder of my dedication to the poetry and just being in that space of collectively reading and thinking and talking together is just, it's just so helpful, you know? It's just so helpful every day, no matter what. And, and even in the most challenging times, it's even more helpful to, to lean into the poems. So I wanted to say thank you. And then I wanted to thank everyone, the regulars in my office hours, Miranda, Hannah, Vijaya, Kat, Denny, Megan, Ben, Krista, Elizabeth, Laura, Christina, more people that I don't remember. Thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure to have these live conversations. And to Paul, who wrote in the final 
final words thread that the pace was a little fast for me. I just want to say it's a little bit fast for everyone, like <laughs> for us too. And so another plug for Slopo coming up um, that will be announced really soon. And and going through everything quickly is a way to kind of find out what you want to know more about and where you want to slow down and spend time. So I just want to invite everyone to look for that. And then also I wanted to say that all the quotes that Al pulled out, I also pulled out, and I've been sitting here crossing them off. Oh, he already said that. But there's a couple left. Um, Kim said... Mod Kim from Barcelona? Yes. Should I not read it? No, you okay. should. K-Y-M-M. Because you are going to no, no, read, gonna read it. You are going to read it, right? No, I'm not going to read any okay. more of those. So. What had, has, says Modbo has become Pope has become like poetry itself. Home, family, no matter how seldom I show up, there you are, welcoming, happy to see me, full of good cheer and unbridled enthusiasm. And I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing your name right, but Leti Le Hang. I am living in Vietnam where the time zone is different from yours. It's morning on your side and evening on mine. That's why I can't join our live webcast, which I like to be there listening. For the last words I say... Thank you, and see you next time. And then finally, I just want to leave you with one of my favorite Bernadette Mayer experiments. Write the longest, most beautiful sentence you can imagine. Make it be a whole page. <laughs> Lainey Brown. Thank you, Lainey. That was beautiful. Thank you so much. Okay, so uh, finally, my final thought, and... Um, you know, the topic might be fairly pedestrian, but my passion about it is huge, so maybe the passion will override the relative boringness of the topic itself. And the topic itself is a recent released study <coughs> that tried to measure what happened to students when we had to go forcibly online in March of 2020. It's now 2022, and the first studies are coming out. These are giant studies. This is telling us really what happened to kids in the United States in particular. Um, when we went online, things like ModPo became kind of, everybody was suddenly on the other side. Oh, online teaching is so bad. Everything is so bad. Nobody's ready to do it. The schools and even the colleges and universities are not ready to do it technologically and it's going to be a failure. All these teachers who had just sort of phoned it in, they come into the class and they just natter on. They Now suddenly they have to do either talking heads or try to do discussion, and discussion using Zoom or other things like that is difficult. And everybody got really mad, and then it became very politicized because closing down the schools, um, people on the right side of the U.S. Ideologi ideological spectrum were against closing down schools, and those who then wanted to be on the left side, left of center and further left, were decrying those who said you shouldn't close down the schools, and therefore, what, they were pro-online learning, but actually hadn't done the work to get ready to do online learning. And then after a while, all those ideological disagreements faded away, and everybody hated online learning. And finally, the results are in as to how students in the United States have done. And their math scores are down significantly. They did f focus particularly on fourth graders and eighth graders because those are pivotal moments in schooling. The math scores are way down in all 50 states. It's a terrible situation. Math instruction did not do it. Kids did not do their homework. This is all in the details of the study. Reading, not down. Reading is basically still the same, which is not good news. I'm not advocating it because reading the reading scores are lo relatively low, and only a third or maybe a little more than a third of American children in fourth grades and eighth grades are reading at a level that we would expect at those grades. But the reading did not go down, and math went way down. And then I got mad at hearing various journalists surmise why the reading scores are not down, but the math scores are. Can anybody guess what, what reason might have been given? Ambrose, what reason might somebody decide that, oh, this is why reading scores aren't down despite all that bad online teaching. Any guess? Anybody? 
I have no idea. Well, the I mean, y- you can get more into it. You can learn while reading alone, maybe a little bit Reading alone, that was a surmise. Also, there's a surmise that during the pandemic, parents were doing more reading to their children, or there was a lot of people sitting around with books. And maybe that's right, but I think it's something else. And this is where Modpo comes back into the whole issue with the pandemic. We never stopped. Modpo went on actually just as normal. I mean, we, did, we didn't sit in this room, but we basically did what we had always done. Um, we had more people participate because people had time and people were leaving their jobs or they were retiring early, et cetera. But what we need to th- think about, and I don't have the answer because the study just came out like yesterday, We need to think about what's the difference. I'm not here to decry STEM or to say that math instruction is generally bad and that you really need to be in class because math teachers are better in class somehow explaining things. I don't understand that. That's not what I'm here to say. What I'm here to say is that we need to think about reading and writing. And what is involved in reading is necessarily not to be alone, but to talk about what you're reading. People inevitably talk about what they're reading. The study showed that parents were really over their heads in guiding kids through math, but reading is iterative, it's interactive, it's interanimated, it has to be, and reading allows you to think, imagine yourself in a place other than the room you've been in for the last three months, wearing a mask when you go outside just for groceries. Reading transports you, Reading takes you into a community, and any time there's a group of people, whether it's just a Zoom office hour or whether it's your fourth grade teacher convening a bunch of people on a Saturday online so that we can read aloud to each other, so that we can respond to each other. What the final words in the thread say, and Lainey gave us a little taste of that, and I did too, is... The reason that I love to read and that it wasn't dampened by the catastrophes that we've suffered in this country, three of them in 2020, not just the pandemic, is because I find people to read with, and reading does exactly what Vic was able to do with his writing, which is to get out of yourself and not to be narcissistic because interpretation doesn't work when you're being narcissistic. So I'm kind of mad at journalists for ass- assuming a few things as to why all reading's the same because, oh, I don't know, parents read to their kids. It's fundamentally more important than that. And reading has a fundamental, reading and writing have fundamental relationships to community building. So once again, I say in conclusion, this course is not really about poetry. I mean, yes, it is. Just as the writer's house isn't really just for writers. The Writer's House is nonlinear thinking house, or I want to be with someone else house, or I'm interested in what someone else thinks of this thing that I'm reading that I don't seem to understand house. And Mod Poe is exactly that as well. And that's what everybody talks about. They talk about the friends that they met. They talk about the, the geographical and linguistic barriers that have been broken. And they talk about how lovely it is to be with people yeah, they mentioned the poets, but you'd be surprised. If you watch the, the recording of this webcast, mostly it was about people. Yeah, the poets were mentioned, and some of them were mentioned as people, but mostly it's about the people that we met. And that's finally why reading is community building, it's democracy building, it's communitarian, and that's what we're about. So thank you for being part of it. Thank you for appreciating the, you know, a beloved community that likes to be generous. It's fun to be generous. It's fun to be responsive, right? It's kind of boring and not fun to have an email in your inbox that's really interesting and decide I don't have time for it and just deleting it or not answering it. (laughs) <laughs> it's more fun to answer and find out who's on the other side. <coughs> so thank you, everybody, once again. Thanks, TAs. You are absolutely the best. I know that we will see you one way or other soon. Thanks to Chris and Zach and to Paul Burke and everybody else. We will see you. Remember, we have Erica with an office hour on tomorrow. 
and Max is going to convene the European Time Zone Group on Saturday, and we'll tell you about Slopo, and we'll tell you about our database, and we'll be in touch soon. Bye, everybody. Be well. Love you all.